So I am here with Dennis, who was in the room for his Dark Materials panel, and I was not there, so I cannot wait <laughs> to hear all about it. What was the overall vibe of the panel like? Well, they, they started off with a trailer, which you just saw. They mm-hmm. debuted a brand new trailer. And just the vibe of everything is, look, a lot of people, maybe some people who don't know, this this is based on a trilogy of books by uh, Philip Pullman that uh, was called His Dark Materials. I mean, each book is a separate one, kind of like you know Song of Ice and Fire yeah. with, with, with uh, Game of Thrones and whatnot and some people know that the they tried to make a movie well they did make a movie called the golden compass uh that starred daniel craig nicole kidman and and a few others and that was a very kind of toned down children-esque i mean this this book trilogy is for young adults but it has a lot more mature themes that are in it sure and one of the complaints about the movie is that they took away some of the anti-religious kind of questioning of authority that type of those type of themes from it from the source material and kind of got it left a much more sanitized version it. of it and as you've seen from the trailer and anyone who's watched it it's it looks much more serious it's much intense. darker yeah and and i like the tone much more because it, it feels like it's playing to all the strengths of what tv shows have become lately mm-hmm. you're able to have a, a children's show matured into a, a show that everyone can watch it definitely doesn't look like a kid's movie it doesn't look like oh that cute bear like it looks intense and i really like that it, we've lived in a world post harry potter post mm-hmm. all these things where magic feels like a new thing again it doesn't feel like we've experienced this world it looks like a brand new world to me was that the presentation was that like some of the conversations Did they talk about the world they were trying to assemble with this first one yeah definitely and they talked about the books a lot. I mean, I don't even if they even mentioned the movie. They may have mentioned it at once, but in general, they're just trying to give the overall tone. I mean, uh, uh, Jane Tranter, who's the executive producer, and uh, who also had worked on stuff with uh, the Doctor Who revival. I mean, this is actually a, a co-production with BBC One and HBO. I saw that looked interesting. Um, and so she made it a point to say, look, this is not an anti-religious because there was an issue like before the Golden Compass, they took out that stuff because they were afraid uh, religious groups would boycott it. Mm. And then they upset the people who were fans of the book, you know, who were fans of the book and saying, oh, you took out some of the more essential parts of it. So she kind of rode the line saying, look, this is not an anti-religious series. But we are going to explore a lot of things about uh, authoritarian dictatorships and questioning authority Mm -hmm. and a lot more serious matters. So there was definitely a a much more serious adult tone to even the conversations they were having during the panel. Well, we're living in a uh, post the past, the path post uh, Handmaid's Tale. Like we're living in a time where we're questioning things. And even, you know, 15 years ago when the Golden Compass came out, I think those conversations weren't happening as publicly. So I think Mm -hmm. it's a better time for this to come out and be more authentic to the book. Uh, Was the tone of uh you know doing it long form addressed was doing it as a series instead of a movie did they talk about adapting it that direction not really we do know that this season starts in fall in the fall and it's eight episodes but they've already been renewed for the second season remember these are three books i don't know if it's like one season is a book Mm -hmm. the second season is another book they did say they are going to change some stuff some of the victorian style fantasy is going to be changed and be more modernized but it's still going to stay probably a lot more faithful than the movie i just don't know how much longer and how much are they going to change and you know we saw with game of thrones obviously they had the source materials it wasn't exactly one season one book Mm -hmm. but it was around that right they would pull certain things from certain seat like a season ahead into a season there or delay another one so i'm wondering if this is going to be three seasons four four seasons but yeah, they they mainly more address kind of the the themes and the tones that they were trying to go for. Now, I love the cast. Mm-hmm. I mean, Ruth Wilson is such an incredible Batman villain on Luther. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I Luther's the best Batman show we've ever had. Uh, and I feel like we've got Daphne Keene, who we haven't really seen since Logan. Yeah. Obviously, James McAvoy is having this incredible tour de force renaissance where he's everywhere. Like, he's here for multiple things at Comic-Con alone. And I'm really curious what that ensemble felt like on stage. How did they get along? What was that vibe like? Well, not only that, you had uh, Lynn uh, Manuel I mean, Miranda. Yeah, I mean, the cast is crazy. Yeah, so, um, yeah, the vibe scene, they, they kind of, like, knew each other very, you could tell they, they knew each other's kind of, like, quirks and whatnot. Because in, in the show, or in the, the series and also in the show, 
there's these things called demons, not D E M O N S, but D E A E M O N S, that are representative of physical manifestations of people's souls. Cool. So with Daphne King's character Lyra, it's the giant polar bear. There, I, I can't pronounce his name, so I don't want to butcher it. But um, so you see that polar bear, that's hers. Oh. Okay. And so Ruth Wilson's is this monkey. I think uh, uh, Lin Manuel's uh, his his character is like a bunny or whatever I so none of so this. yeah so they these characters they get to know themselves very very well and yeah. each other very well so and you talk about ruth wilson <laughs> she's she plays a villain in this one she plays uh, marissa uh, coulter so she runs kind of the, the the orphanage that that uh that Daphne King's character, Lyra, is uh, a part of. Uh, Batman the Animated Series fans, I didn't forget about you. I meant live action. I just wanted to stop the YouTube <laughs> comments now. That show is incredible. Uh, but with the Golden Compass being a, a you know, we push that aside. Yes. I love that this has already been greenlit for season two. Yes. So as we fall in love with this season, we get a season two. Is it going to be a consistent showrunner, a consistent series of directors? Did they talk about the behind the scenes? And well, stuff at all? I think Jack Thorne, uh, who adapted this the books to the screenplay, I think, if I'm not mistaken, wrote either all or a good amount wow. of, of the episodes. Okay. So I think, you know, they're going to keep going on with that, with the same, uh, you know, yeah. head writer. As, as they should, because it looks, I mean, I, I really was impressed with the first trailer. I think the second trailer had a great pace. So mm -hmm. by the time we got to the big moment, we all remember of the polar bear. We, we've earned it, so to speak. Yes. Um, what was your favorite moment of the trailer? What really caught you in the theater? Um, I mean, it was the tone overall. I mean, you mentioned the polar bear coming out. Like, it was definitely not the kind of kid version, right? Because <laughs> yeah. the, the, this polar bear had, like, scars on him. Yeah. And the way that he was very vicious. Right. Right, so the tone of this was very scary, and like there's a lot of tension. This was definitely this isn't for kids. Right, he's this, not I selling Coca-Cola. No, he's not that no, kind no. of polar bear. No, you're not bringing. You know, this is HBO, right? Yeah. Like, why are they bringing it to HBO? Why are they doing it? They're they're not doing it. I mean, remember, it is for young adults, so they never like went super super mature. But they, they at the same time, they're not making it for kids. Sure. I, I think it looks incredible. Uh, it sounds like the panel went well. It sounds yeah. like the whole vibe of the room was interested. Uh, I was excited to see this post. I think it was after Game of Thrones we first got our, our preview. Yes. So their their schedule's ramping up beautifully. I think they're doing a good job marketing yeah, with, it. With Watchmen also coming. Yeah. You know. uh, so now when does this uh, season actually drop? They didn't give a date. It said fall 2019. Okay. So, so know, we should get one more trailer. Probably. They'll probably have a launch trailer right before. Okay. Probably in September or something like that. So and launch trailer, hopefully with a date. And uh, as of now, I'm definitely in. And you feel yes, good about it? Def definitely in. Much more interested. I mean, I was already interested, but uh, I think after seeing this panel and also seeing that new trailer, uh, much more. Yeah. You know. All right, we're all in for His Dark Materials. It looks great. It looks adult. It looks dark. I like long form. I think books that are as long as these books are should be more than two hours and perhaps have scarier teddy bears. Uh, I'm very excited, guys. Check out His Dark Materials this fall, and we will keep bringing you coverage. Make sure that notification bell is on because we're going to be dropping all sorts of stuff as much as the Wi-Fi allows. All right, guys. We'll talk to you soon.